Nowadays, new technologies are very common because everybody has a phone, everybody has a laptop, everybody has a tablet. You can use those technologies in teaching and in learning. Of course, it's very sometimes very tricky because uh, if you give a phone to your student, he or she immediately go to the social media and he's like distracted by many things. But if you set uh, boundaries properly, it can be very effective. And we would like to find out if those um, technologies, if they don't cause cognitive overload and would like to compare them. We invite uh, schools from around the university, from around the Krakow. In general, we will work with eighth grade of lower secondary school and uh, with the third grade of upper secondary school. Also, we try to teach pre-service teachers, that means those are students that will go to school and that they will teach later in schools. In total, we hope to have around 600 uh, students. Dlaczego generalnie jest taki pomysł, że chemia jest trudna? Bo sami też trochę tym nie podtrzymujemy. We also would like to show them uh, what we are doing here, what's the meaning of uh, didactics of chemistry or chemistry education in general. We also would like to show them uh, different methods of uh, teaching. We have to stop the stop. Each of us is different. Each of us has different memories, different possibilities, I would say, related to the examination. At first, they uh, do pre-test. Then there is the lecture, uh, and then there is a post-test. Pre-test and post-test looks more or less the same. So at first we measure uh, working memory capacity. After that, students solve chemistry test. And during this test, we measure uh, cognitive load. We measure it through heart rate, and we measure it through electroencephalography. So uh, we measure how fast uh, they heart beats, and we measure the activity of their brain, because it's very important to know that. After that, they are split to four different groups. We use traditional models. We use tablets. And then we have virtual Googles. Tak wygląda mniej więcej lekcja, to znaczy uczniowie mają swoje tablice, na której piszą. To jest moja duża tablica, na której ja pokazuję różne rzeczy i na prawej ręce naciskamy koło joysticka, macie takie tablice. Tutaj nie wiem, czy pani ma wystarczająco? Tak, to myśmy wchodzili po kolei. The last one is learning with computers and with computer app. And after the lesson they come back here and we do the same set of this as at the beginning. It's very important like, um, to find out if they learn something. We measure working memory capacity. After that, they do the knowledge test and we measure again heart rate and electroencephalography. And from those results, we can compare different methods of uh, learning. Pierwszy raz doświadczyłam gogli, więc wydaje mi się, że to jest takie najciekawsze um, rzeczywiście do spróbowania i chciałabym, żeby każdy uczeń miał możliwość doświadczenia czegoś takiego, bo nie dość, że można tam robić jakieś doświadczenia, to można rzeczywiście te cząsteczki pooglądać z każdej strony i to jest bardzo unikalne doświadczenie. Wydaje mi się, że warto spróbować na pewno. W warunkach, w których nie mogłyby odbyć się zajęcia w klasie, każdy łączyłby się ze swojego domu, to e, takie gogle byłyby naprawdę cenną pomocą dydaktyczną. A nie mogę powiedzieć, a to widać, że Ale nie, ale to Tak, ale Tak. Dobra, widzę białko, okej. When we see that uh, some uh, material students can learn faster, for example, in virtual reality, to is very beneficial for us. Because then we can, for example, in 45 minute lesson, they can learn much more information. Obiektywnie mierzyć to obciążenie nasze, albo obciążenie nauczania, obciążenie poznawcze. Czyli jeszcze o jedną. We have results from pilot study because at first we need to like set uh, all the settings uh, of the research, but uh, we can already see some differences between um, different methods. I would say. So far, I can say that uh, working in uh, mixed reality looks the best, uh, but uh, we will see, I would say, after the bigger group.
Our results could be helpful at first uh, for those who create educational programs because uh, they could like say that um, this is important, for example, to buy uh, this equipment to schools. That's the first step. But the very important step is uh, to speak about teachers because those are the people who really use those technologies and who really can uh, change those lessons. And those are the people who really um, teach students uh, at schools. My name is Maria Babinchakova and I come from Slovak Republic and I moved here two years ago with my mentor. We saw this opportunity to write a project under the Poland SPIS. We got the funding and uh, hopefully we'll be able to move education in Poland to better direction. <laughs>